So it looks like we have a good amount of people here and um, we're gonna go ahead and start demo day. Thank you all for coming. I'd like to introduce you to the Dean of UCSD's Rady School, Lisa Ordonez. Hi, welcome everyone and thank you for attending demo day. This evening's demo day is critical to the success of the Start Our program, playing an important part in the development of these teams into companies. And this is my second ever Demo Days Dean, and I believe it's our first ever virtual demo day. And this is certainly a lot better than fighting traffic and searching endlessly for a parking place, isn't it? Um, the Start Our program is funded 100% through philanthropy and would not be possible without support from mentors, donors, sponsors in the community. The generosity of our donors and sponsors help us develop entrepreneurial leaders and provide resources to spur innovation and the creation of new startups locally and across the globe. Thank you to our family of supporters and this year's sponsors. Your contribution is invaluable. I have the pleasure of welcoming, welcoming the MCs for tonight and start our Accelerator co-founder, Lada Raskochova and Kim Davis-King. Uh, SEED uh, team. Uh, SEED stands for California Institute for Innovation and Development and Star Our Accelerator program is, uh, is one of the programs that SEED uh, has on, uh, on its roster. I would like to especially thank today to Diana who really put this entire virtual event together. Start Our Accelerator is a four months long program that we have at the Rady School of Management. It, uh, it is for teams and I, teams with ideas uh, from uh, anybody from undergraduates to graduate students to PhD students to postdoc and not only students but also alumni from both the Rady School as well as UCSD. Start our overtime groom into different trucks. And today you will hear from teams from Start Our Impact Truck, Start Our Veteran, Start Our Inclusion and Start Our Rady. Here are all, all of the teams that you will hear from today. They are from Start Our 2019 and 2020 cohort. So we'd like to share with you some of our numbers and for the Start Our programs. So we're at nearly 200 Start Our teams that have graduated from the program, raising over $118 million in funding. We've had four exits, with our last exit being Ira, which was sold in December 2019. And two of our teams, Swapsy and Cronus Health, have raised money from the Rady Venture Fund. And finally, now we have seven teams that are on their second startup. We'd like to congratulate Alex Trainer, who just became the CEO of one of the launch factory companies. So tonight, we will have 10 of the teams that will present to you. And we'd also like to first introduce our special guests from Stardar alumni, Jaden Reisner, who is the CEO of Family Proud. And he's gonna to talk to you a little bit today about his startup and the impact that he is making. Jaden. Thanks, Kim, appreciate it. And can't say enough about uh, the program and as a, an alum of Flex Weekend 2019 and the Start Our program. Uh, yeah, really fortunate to be back here and see so many friendly faces. So th thanks so much for the time. and. Uh, we'll just be giving a, a brief overview of where Family Proud is today from its genesis out of Start R and the Ready program. And yeah, once again, just can't say enough about the, the faculty and, and students in the, in the program. Uh, so once again, yeah, CEO, co-founder of Family Proud. It's an AI powered family care management tool. And several years ago, I was deployed with the Navy when I was notified that my mother had a heart attack and the concept of remote support was really the genesis of Family Proud. So after that gut sinking feeling settled in, I began to ask myself some tough questions in terms of how is my mother going to be receiving that care and how is she going to be receiving the best possible uh, support? 
Sadly, medical expenses are the number one reason families go bankrupt in the United States. The financial burden combined with the emotional and logistical burden that families go through through their time of care are certainly crippling for our families and our loved ones deserve better, especially relevant right now. Family Proud is changing how our loved ones navigate hardship through our technology. How do we do that? Through the AI powered, we not only allow friends and families to invite their loved ones on, have a private and secure place to communicate, but a peer to peer aspect that now allows families to connect to other families who've been through that similar hardship or adversity. So mom whose son has been diagnosed at Rady Children's Hospital can now connect to another mother that's looking to provide that support and truly understands. The care calendar uh, provides a list of recommendations based on the hardship and it's triggered based on their profile and allows them not only to have the best possible support, but allows supporters an understanding of how to best to answer that question, how they can help. The care registry is similar to a wedding registry, but for patients and families, provides product service recommendations so that there's now a transparent, sustainable support model for the family. Here's the application at work. You can see the platform itself assigning subtasks, so there's that clear coordination. Once again, those recommendations is how a family can best support. Updates, so wherever you are in the world, you have an understanding and have an awareness of what's going on within your family, even if you're not able to be there for them. And the aspect to actually connect to who's within your community, someone who's best possible to be able to support you, whether perhaps it's another veteran, perhaps it's another single mother, the ability to have that commonality within the peer-to-peer -peer aspect is truly what's empowering the family is different than many of the support groups that are out there. Although there are siloed resource tools that do exist out there, both on the transactional side as well as the social support side, Family Proud wraps all these end around services into one platform. With over $4 trillion spent in healthcare, over $350 billion are actually out of pocket expenses. Whether it's keeping food on the table to care items to transportation, families are being crippled by these, by these expenses. Where do we start? We've dialed into pediatric oncology as our starting point. Why? Because it's one of the highest out of pocket expen expenses as well as one of the longest periods of inpatient care and treatment. The Family Proud business model is based on empowering that support network to support Lucy's family. So Lucy's support network has that transparent way to provide those services, the food, the transparent transportation, and even Lucy's favorite socks to ultimately allowing Lucy's family the best possible support and Family Proud takes a revenue share from the products and services, not the family. Our numbers are based on an average raise of $500. We take an average of 3% net. Our projections take us out to 11 million by year three with over 400,000 lives impacted. The registry is this initial engagement platform. However, with the AI, there is both a licensing software play as well as a data play at scale in terms of population health. We're fortunate to go through NextCube's digital health accelerator so have a strong understanding of how we fit into the healthcare and wellness marketplace. Currently live with Rady Children's, have established partnerships, and also a phase one SBIR contract with the Air Force awaiting on our phase two results. We're currently closing out our angel round. We've raised about $350,000, uh, looking to close our $500,000 raise. This is definitely focused on our product at this stage and proud to call NextCube and PedFed Foundations, both strategic partners and investors. Myself, Flex Weekend 19, uh, a graduate as well as Clay, a co-founder, also a Flex Weekend 2019 graduate. And despite all the logos here with our Navy Marine Corps backgrounds and fortunate to have gone through several programs to include Start R, what really makes our team special is the fact that we've all been patients and caregivers ourselves and truly understand the problem that we're solving. Fortunate to be backed by a strong group of advisors, many that you'll recognize as uh, strong advocates in the space here in the community to mitigate both in the legal, the technology, and healthcare aspects as a startup. With all that said, in terms of where Family Proud has come, it's certainly come a long way from a genesis out of the Start Our program. You know, really my message to the rest of the teams tonight is that it is certainly a marathon. You know, Clay and I started there bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, sitting in Liberty Station, um, starting out on this venture, and it's, we're still running the marathon. So you know, really what I'd say to the rest of the teams, you know, congratulations on taking that first step to into the world of entrepreneurship, you know, for some for some of you, it's uh, maybe maybe your first, and really self care is extremely important, especially right now. Uh, take care of the people that are on your team and that are around you, and certainly be open to continuing to grow and commitment to service in your community, just as you've learned through your time at Rady. And uh, with that, please reach out anytime, and the and the best of luck. And once again, thanks again to the staff and faculty of Rady, and, and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.
Great, thank you, Jaden, and thank you for excellent presentation and all of your hard work. So I wanna talk a little bit about the format for tonight. So we'll have 10 teams that will present for five minutes, followed by two questions from Q&A. So audience, please use the chat for the Q&A, and then we'll have an audience vote after all 10 of the presentations through the Zoom poll. So the first team I'd like to introduce is Bioenergy. Bioenergy as part of our Start Our Impact teams. Hi, I'm Ina Partika, CEO of the Bioenergy Project. My teammates Zach, Andy, and I combined our knowledge in project management, anaerobic digestion, chemistry, hydroponics, aquaponics, and computer science to create our fully automated and carbon neutral digester ponic system. We were inspired to create this when we saw that the world was entering into a food, energy, and climate trilemma. Over 133 billion pounds of food waste is just thrown away in the United States every single year, which is the third main contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, and one of the main contributors to filling landfills. Meanwhile, over one in nine Americans are food insecure, which is only expected to increase with rising global population and energy and food demand, especially lately with the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. However, there is hope. The Bioenergy Project solves this trilemma by allowing universities, restaurants, and individuals to convert the nutrients in their food waste into usable products such as biogas, fertilizer, and food. This begins with anaerobic digestion, where the food waste is broken down into biogas for cooking, heating, and electricity generation, and into liquid digestate, which through our water treatment can be used to uh, become fertilizer, which can grow food in farms, orchards, and hydroponics. The user can also completely control and monitor our entire system with our microprocessors, which really allows this technology to be open to the common person as well as to businesses that don't necessarily have experience in wastewater treatment. We currently have less than 10 microdigester competitors within the market throughout the world, and while most of them focus on affordable and local solutions, we're the only company that really has a fully automated system with integrated hydroponic and aquaponic modules that's powered completely by renewable electricity, participates in community scale educational workshops, and has the necessary benefits corporation, organic, and wastewater certifications that we're working towards to really ensure consumer confidence. In order to diversify our revenue streams, we have a multifaceted business plan that consists of a digester ponics product, for universities, rural residents, and off-grid and environmental enthusiasts, and a community hub franchise for restaurants and urban residents. We begin with the university product, where we really develop our university community partnerships, such as with community composters, community organizers, and community-supported agriculture, to maintain and operate our community hubs where we collect food waste from and provide food to the individuals who need it, in addition to providing educational workshops in urban agriculture, food waste mitigation, and healthy eating. The experience we gain with these workshops and products really allow us to fully develop our residential product and our instructional videos on YouTube and Patreon to really ensure an efficient, modular, and scalable system. Our beachhead market is currently 281 California universities, which has a $19 million market opportunity. And all of the 25 universities that we've interviewed have carbon zero waste goals, a demand for local fresh produce, and a desire for experiential environmental education, all of which our product can provide. We'll then expand to US universities with an opportunity of 283 million, US restaurants and urban residents with an opportunity of 8 billion, and US rural residents and off-grid and environmental enthusiasts with an opportunity of 75 billion. And this has been validated from the interviews that we've done with over 30 Californians, 21 older, where over 70% of them were interested and willing to pay for a digester product, and over 75% of them were interested and willing to pay for a community hub in their area. We also have a global market in developing countries such as China and Southeast Asia, which have the most agricultural food waste, and in developing and in more developed countries such as the US, Canada, Europe, and Brazil, which have the most consumer food waste. We've currently won prizes. Uh, that are nationally acclaimed, such as the Level Cinema T Inventors Prize. We currently have business agreements with UC San Diego and Miho Catering, and we've participated in an accelerator program such as the Rabobank MIT, Food and Ag Prize, and Rady Starter Impact. And with all of this traction, we'll be able to complete our second university system with UC Riverside. 
good by June of 2021. And we'll also complete our first community hub by uh, December of 2020, complete our certifications by June of 2021, and complete our residential product rollout by July of 2021 with our goal of reaching $280,000 for our first two years of, of operations. In summary, the bioenergy project is solving the trilemma of food, energy, and climate through modular and scalable products from individuals to universities and through our community hub, which is relieving food insecurity through community education and empowerment. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so we're gonna take a couple questions from chat. So please post your questions. Um, one question that's come in, it says, it seems like your product needs a large land and support would be dependent upon messy, inefficient trash and a sanitary grid. So can you tell us a little bit about how you have done the tests so far and how this would work in the domestic area? Sure. So currently our system takes up about the size of a, a small shipping container, which is about five by, by 20 feet really. So we can make it compact and really be able to be easily shipped to say um, like a, another community garden. Our current prototype is at UC San Diego with um, a community garden there and it's worked out really well for them. Um, and we currently have partnerships with Ocean View Growing Grounds which, which is another community garden in a food insecure neighborhood in Southeast San Diego. And so they're actually really looking forward to having um, the system there. And so we, we also have partnerships with Food to Soil, um, which is a community composting organization and other community organizations that will really enable us to, you know, get our digester product out into, um, into the community in an efficient way. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Our next team, our next presenter is a Star Ready team, Brilliant Biome. Hello, I'm Dr. Sierra Simpson, founder of Brilliant Biome, an early stage biotech company at the intersection of the gut microbiome and opioid addiction. We aim to eliminate the risk of opioid addiction from the inside out. 130 deaths per day. No, this isn't the number of diabetes or lung cancer deaths, though those numbers are similar. It's the number of opioid overdose related deaths per day. That's the same number as five average elementary school classrooms. That's 50,000 deaths a year. And 15 million people are still abusing opioids. This number will only increase with the current COVID crisis with numbers accelerating due to social isolation, lack of normal support meetings due to shelter in place orders and increased anxiety due to pandemic concerns. This cause is also near and dear to my heart. My grandfather who was a veteran struggled with opioids and chronic pain late in his life. I know many of you out there may also have similar experiences with loved ones. Opioids have impacted society in a multitude of ways. Communities have seen increases in needles in public spaces, such as parks and libraries. Government spending has increased for community surveillance and ambulance costs, with some users needing multiple trips in an ambulance in a single day. And hospital emergency services are also strained due to the influx of opioid-related cases. Drug seekers and overdose victims are putting a strain on an already overburdened system. And this stands to cost us nearly $500 billion, over the next five years. The major problem with opiate addiction though is that there are only a few options for lasting treatment and many of them don't work very well. Replacement therapies such as methadone are addictive themselves and require people to visit a clinic regularly to receive treatment. There are also only a few genetic tests that can predict some differences in the response to opioids, but many of them are not beneficial in the long run. And most treatments require patients to be detoxed from substances prior to initiating any small molecule treatment. This can be difficult because severe withdrawal symptoms are a significant impetus to relapse. So what addiction needs is precision. Not all humans are the same. We have different genetics, lifestyles, and diets. As mosaic beings, we need to approach each person for who they are and what they are. And this needs to start from within. 
the gut microbiome has been substantially affected by the modern use of antibiotics, prescription drugs, and from high fat, high sugar, and high processed food diets. And the way that the gut can impact our behavior is through signaling along the gut-brain axis. Imagine that we had an organ that weighed nearly the same as our brain, and we've been completely ignoring it. That's the gut microbiome. It not only educates our immune system, it protects us from pathogenic bacteria and secretes molecules that signal throughout our bodies and including our brain. To put it into perspective, I like to ask this question. Are we more microbe than we are human? There are over 100 trillion microbial cells in and on our bodies, while there are only 30 trillion human cells. These microbes have over 2 million genes, while we have nearly 23,000. We've been co-evolving with microbes since the beginning of time, so why not use them to improve our health outcomes and protect us from negative influences? And this leads us to our solution for the opioid epidemic. We will use the microbiome to predict the risk of with an advanced precision medicine approach using an AI platform. By understanding the players in the gut microbiome, we can optimize treatment both before and after opioid exposure and accelerate recovery through that support as well as our small molecule therapeutics that we discovered in our recent preclinical research efforts. I'm happy to say that the patent is pending on both of those processes as of April 2020. So why is this needed? Well, the average opioid patient costs nearly 10 to 60 times more than a non-opioid using patient, representing a major, birth, uh, major burden on our healthcare system. And rehabs can cost $30,000 for 30 days of treatment, with many patients requiring three to six months of treatment, which is a financial burden for individuals and their families. And if the patient decides to use a replacement therapy like methadone, they're still going to spend $5,000 a year on that kind of treatment. If they relapse, a normal opioid habit costs between $10,000 and $30,000 per year for using those drugs. And the way we approach this is our product journey. What happens is the patient orders the kit, pictured on the right-hand side. The kit is delivered to the patient who can collect the specimen in the privacy and comfort of their home or rehab facility. The specimen is kept at room temperature, no need for chilled mailers and then sent back to our facility where it's sequenced. That is run through our AI pipeline and then sent back to both the patient and any designees of their care. And then uh, with our precision medicine, we are offering, and as a result of this process, we send back and we offer support through our inclusive community as well as precision approach to each person's recovery, hopefully helping people lead happier and healthier lives. This is a substantial market with a total market encompassing nearly $78.5 billion with our share at 1.26 billion with only looking at rehab facilities in the San Diego and LA area with quite a high willingness to pay of one to $2,000. We hope to expand it into pain clinics and wider healthcare ecosystems as we develop this company. Our business model is flexible. Patients, hospitals, and rehab facilities can all order the test. We'll also be working on our small molecule therapeutics for those being exposed to opiates in the clinic and in rehab facilities that are trying to get clean. And finally, we'll create an inclusive community to support people to lead their best life. There's also the possibility to offer a subscription service for those that need an extended help. If you'd like to be a part of our future or could introduce us to potential partners, investors, or give guidance to the F on the FDA regulatory pathways, we'd love to hear from you. Our plan moving forward into the rehab facilities are listed below on the timeline from our patent that was filed in April to the publication of our work in a major scientific journal. We're working really hard to bring this technology to the larger community with our eye on initiating an IND for small molecules closer to the end of the year. With, these, with this goal in mind, we have an experienced team to lead this endeavor with decades of experience in addiction neuroscience, bioinformatics, and the microbiome, as well as a strong support system from Rady MBAs and mentors within UCSD and the greater biotech community. As well as with our experience from Stardar Rady, we're charging forward. Feel free to always reach out to us with any questions. We're Brilliant Biome, trust your gut. Uh, thank you very much. We have few questions and one of them is, uh, what kind of data do you have that links the microbiome to opioid addiction? you published data? Uh, one of our papers has already been published. We have several more on the way. 
Um, and we did extensive preclinical research in models of opioid addiction with both microbiome sequencing and untargeted metabolomics. Uh, great. Um, uh, somebody else was asking, do you think something like that could be used as a, uh, as a over-the-counter drug as well? Not just a prescription there only. Uh, it's a possibility. It depends on which regulatory pathway that we end up going down and if we develop other prebiotics or probiotics to go along with our small molecule therapeutics. Um, it's definitely on our minds. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our next team we're going to have from the Start Our Rady program is DMD Flowers. Thank you, Professor King. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our DMD speech. Detect the microbe, detect the danger. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Nai Qing. And I'm Bai Wang. We are representing the DMD team, battery microbe detection. DMD may sound like DMV, but we work much faster. At DMD, our solutions and services help ensure food safety and food quality. Yes, who does not need food? Food safety and food quality are critical to our daily life. I cannot agree more, Jiarong. Here is a table from FDA listing the recent food recall. Most are caused by microbe contamination. It causes one in 10 people suffering from foodborne diseases, which could be severe, even fatal sometimes. Look at this poor graduate student. If food safety detection occur faster, I wouldn't have to suffer from food poisoning. After surviving from food poisoning, I want to learn more about food safety and food quality. Elizabeth, do you know how much bacteria and yeast is in this kombucha I just drank? I have no idea, Jaro. Do you know that the number of bacteria or microbes, different ratios, and their different viability can simply alter the taste and nutrition of the kombucha drink? The same principle actually applies to beer and wine, determining their quality. Yes, if the manufacturer knows those parameters much earlier, they can ensure the food quality in a timely fashion. Main issues and the concerns of food safety, bad bugs, and food quality, good bugs, are caused by lack of efficient, timely detection methods. It is always too late when you get the test results. Traditionally, people use Petri dishes to determine and detect bugs by counting the number of colonies grown. It usually takes two to five days to get results and only works for culturable live microbes. Our DMD team has developed an innovative flow DNA test that only takes about 15 minutes to get the results with a robust multi-channel laser system in combination with our expert design. We are able to detect multiple microbes simultaneously to determine the exact composition of the sample. Hence, we can provide a rapid and more accurate detection on a much broader detection scope for multiple species. There is no need to wait days to get the results. Our technology enables a timely action or treatment to save money, save lives, and save the year. Yes, DMD provides one-stop solution from sample pickup to, recording, to reporting two hours for our local customers as shown in this video clip. So exactly how big is this market size? The food safety detection is actually already a $16 billion market for food quality detection. The market is twice as big. Adding them together, the total available market in 2019 is actually $55 billion. We also checked the SAM and the SOM, 
we would like to target local customers at first. The LAN launchable, launch available market is a $64 million in a very conservative way. In consideration of the margin, what we propose at DMD is definitely a highly profitable business. The market size is great. How to enter it? Great question. After market research, customer survey, and field testing, we decided to target probiotics company, brewery, and winery as early innovators and adopters. Farms, diary industry, and conventional drink and food manufacturers as early majority, and cruise lines and grocery stores as late majority. Yes, our DMD team has distinct expertise, experience, and diversity. Customer-centric location and our access to resources, networking, and enthusiasm will largely facilitate our business. We sincerely appreciate the mentoring help from Steve, Amy, and also Amy, as well as Professor Kim, Lada, Diana, and Karen at the STAR program. If the bad bugs do not kill you, the good bugs will make you stronger. Whatever bugs you may have, good bugs or bad bugs, however many they are, please contact the DMD to know better of the bugs ASAP. Thank you very much for all your attention. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. So we have a couple questions. Um, does the E. coli use case um, with, the, with the grower or have a grower or a distributor? Is there an E. coli use case at all? Uh, yes, different micro E. coli is one of the bacteria. And actually, uh, this um, multi-barrier company, they are targeting for, uh, e. for the E. coli as well as the Lysotera monocytogenous. So they contact us. We have done field testing, field testing for them. So definitely, it's one of our target. And what is the cost of the test? Uh, the cost of the test is uh, very low as long as you develop the assay. So the assay dev might be a little high, but the cost is really definitely the instrument. You, you, you have to buy the instrument, right? Great. Thank you very much, team. Our next theme on the agenda is um, Helper Monkey, and this is a Stardar Impact team. Hello, my name is Zina Patel. And my name is Michael Bennington. As a part of the 2020 Stardar Impact and Stardar Inclusion cohorts, we are delighted to introduce you to the Helper Monkey, which is a device that helps students with auditory processing disorder, or APD, to succeed in traditional schooling. So what is auditory processing disorder? APD is a condition where people have difficulty recognizing and interpreting sounds. For example, in a classroom, a teacher is Meanwhile, a child with APD is trying to focus on the lesson, but is hearing everything that is going on around them. Again, hear what the teacher is saying, and they have a hard time focusing on the material. So what you just experienced is an example of what a student with APD would hear in a classroom setting. Students with APD become overstimulated by surrounding noises, especially by loud, sudden sounds. This means that they struggle to focus and thus to have difficulty thriving in class. In extreme cases, this overstimulation can even um, trigger their fight or flight response, and they can become disruptive or even dangerous to themselves and their classmates. And because of these factors, students often need to be removed from traditional classrooms, which can take away opportunities that are afforded to them or that are not afforded to them, but are afforded to other students. So why is this relevant? One in 60 students are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, and of those, 80% are also diagnosed with APD. Which is, a pro which is approximately a million students, and this does not even cover all of the cases. We are addressing this issue because currently there are no solutions that address all facets of APD, specifically for our target users of students in the classroom environment. Students can wear noise-canceling headphones to block out the excessive noise, but they will also miss what the teacher is saying. Devices like Vibes and Noise Off allow for some noise to be heard by the user, but do not address the, the sudden loud sounds that significantly affect these students. The helper monkey is different uh, in its use of variable noise canceling. This device not, is not only able to cancel background noises, but also prioritizes voices and adjusts automatically to sudden changes in the volume level. This automaticity has not been implemented in previous technologies. So by combining these technologies, we are able to provide a threefold value proposition. The helper monkey helps to keep children in traditional schooling 
so that they are provided with all of the educational opportunities. For their parents or guardians, knowing that their children are safe and comfortable, and it offers more resources for occupational therapy centers so that they can help more patients. Altogether, these avenues work to provide children with APD with the tools they need to succeed. We began prototyping with analog circuits, but we ran into some issues. And so some of our uh, mentors encouraged us to pivot towards a software forward digital signal processing focus. So currently we are working to develop a deep learning model that implements both traditional audio manipulation and noise canceling techniques in combination with voice amplification. Within the $29 billion market of assistive technology, autism and APD constitute a $1 billion subgroup. In this niche market, there is still plenty of room for advancement as the needs of over 1 million students with APD have still not been completely addressed. We have proposed three revenue streams for the Helper Monkey, which include one-time purchase for the device by parents and occupational therapy centers, a school subscription service with replaceable parts for each student, and repetitive purchase of customizable shells as shown below on the slide. For our next steps, we are continuing to work to develop the technology and applying for grant money. We are also looking to partner with both autism foundations and the healthcare professionals at the Rady Children's Hospital. Ultimately, our goal is to create an important societal impact by ensuring that an underserved group of students are able to succeed in traditional schooling. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Could this be covered by healthcare insurance? Yeah, so the goal of this really is to keep it as low cost as possible. And the idea would be to keep it at sufficiently low enough cost that it would not need to be covered by insurance. We would want parents to feel comfortable being able to purchase this product without having to go through um, their insurance provider. So it's just one less hoop that they have to go through. It's, it's one less barrier to them getting the device. Um, they can't be told no by their insurance company. They'll be able to give this device to their child without any um, massive either like kind of uh, logistical or financial burdens. Uh, great. Second question was around durability. Is this product durable and have you made a prototype? Yeah, so the product will be durable enough because we know that kids can often like break certain things. And so we want to incorporate like the flexibility as well as the durability for the essential like comfortability for the students. And we're currently working on the software prototype, as Michael mentioned, the deep learning model. We have, have um, 3D printed models, but they are not fully functional. And so that's kind of where we are right now in terms of development. Thank you very much, Helper Monkey. So our next team is Heroes Helping Heroes, and they're from both the Start Our Impact and the Start Our Veteran program. Hello everybody, I'm Margie and my partner Mark is the founder of H3 Heroes Helping Heroes for Life. We are a grassroots social enterprise with a for-profit side and a non-profit side. We focus on homeless veterans and their families and bringing them a sense of dignity. We support behavioral health, suicide prevention, and homelessness, and we invest in social impact through genuine goodwill. The problem is veteran homelessness. It's a national tragedy. Over 10,000 homeless veterans live right here in California, which is a fourth of the nation's total that we know of. Veterans are twice as likely to be chronically homeless than other Americans due to their unique circumstances, which lead to higher rates of PTSD, depression, substance abuse, and relationship problems. The statistics are staggering. Over 40,000 veterans in America have no place to call home. 23 veterans take their lives by suicide on any given day. Our heroes deserve dignity. They sacrifice their lives for us, for our freedom. Who will help them with a lifeline of support? We will. Our journey is personal, especially to me and to the San Diego community and our team. I am a Navy veteran of the USS Midway where I also served on the committee to help bring our beautiful old lady to San Diego as a museum. It took us 12 long years. I am also a retiring uh, firefighter and deputy fire marshal with San Diego Fire 
fire, uh, Senegal Fire Department. Unfortunately, my journey to homelessness started uh, on board the USS Midway, where we were involved in a horrible accident where uh, I, was, I sustained injury, there was death involved, uh, and a serious injury to many sailors that I personally witnessed. I took that unknowingly PTSD to the fire department where I was one of the first engines to respond to the San Isidro massacre uh, where a majority of the, the death and injury were children. Uh, my journey continued through injury where I sustained a broken neck, a ceiling falling in on me. All of this resulted in uh, me going down a road that wasn't very pleasant. It involved uh, 18 surgeries, um, which led to uh, opiate addiction. And it was a hand up that helped me to not spiral out of complete control. And, and it is our goal at Heroes Helping Heroes to make sure other veterans that are have found humbling circumstances, found themselves homeless with their families, to not suffer the same route and, uh, and, and to make sure that no veteran uh, has to deal with what my family and I had to deal with. So it's our goal to make sure that we're blessed to be able to give a hand up to those homeless veterans in need. We have a solution and a cure. We are going to bring dignity from the streets to the mountaintop. Our program includes rolling stand downs where we can service our homeless veterans, not just once a year for three days, but the other 362. And we'll take them from the street to tiny home veteran village communities where they can gain job skills and heal to become contributing members of society once again. Our program of rolling stand downs includes the urgently needed COVID-19 mobile test stations where we're able to bring the testing out to the community and in a turnaround time of 12 hours or less, we can identify those who are infected and have no home to self quarantine. We will bring hygiene units with rolling showers and hand washing stations and resource centers to help our veterans connect to the services that they deserve. In our tiny homes, veteran villages, we provide transitional housing, skills training, and health and wellness programs. Our business model is a social enterprise, which has a for-profit and a non-profit side. We raise our own funds to fund our programs. Our signature program is Waste Free America. There are $300 million in unredeemed recyclables left on the table in California each and every year. That's $1.6 billion nationwide across 10 state, states with bottle deposit laws. Our goal, our program, will take those bottles and cans, educate the community to sort at the source, take those clean recyclables in community centers, in parking lots around the community, at high schools, elementary schools, uh, uh, retail establishments, sporting venues, and turn that bottle and can into a program for our homeless veterans. Through the organizational support with the nonprofit community and businesses who will sponsor and donate, we are able to have a steady revenue stream to fund our programs. Our team, uh, Mark, myself, our chairman of the board, uh, grew up in this military community. We're heavily invested in honoring the legacy of our fathers and families who gave their all, and our mothers and um, parents as well. Our team includes expertise in business, in project management, in social services, with a host of uh, support. Our partners are working with us on our Dignity in the Street programs and the development of the housing tiny communities up and down the state of California. Our supporting mentors were very grateful for being part of the Ready Start Our programs, Bunker Labs Veteran in Residence program, and the gold standard of social enterprise, C Alliance. The difference that we bring for social impact through genuine goodwill is a focus on veterans there are homelessness programs, there are mobile showers, but none targeted specifically to our veterans who sacrificed for our freedoms. 
we bring testing, we bring showers, we bring family services, housing, and eco-friendly, environmentally sustainable products and services through genuine goodwill. We need your help now. Please help us help others. The mobile test stations are shelf ready and we're eager to get them out to the community to keep our homeless veterans safe as well as the entire community at large once we open back up to work and school from this pandemic. We can run a mobile hygiene unit on a route for a year in San Diego and replicate that model in five cities up and down the state. Our tiny homes villages, we have land in Ramona that needs development and we're gonna bring the community in to build the homes to service our veterans. Thank you for this opportunity to share. We look forward to working together with you on resources and um, community efforts to help our homeless veterans. Help us help others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a couple questions we have from our audience. Um, the first one is, um, how are you different from not other nonprofit organizations out there? The difference between us and other nonprofits is that we are a social enterprise. While we do rely on donations and government grants, our mainstay of revenue is our own enterprising projects, the Waste Free Project. Uh, we have recyclable and sustainable products. We'll have an e-commerce store and um, other services and special events to raise funds for our own programs. And is your only revenue support from recycling? What other revenue do you have besides the donations or re recycling that you have? I just jumped the gun on that question. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have products and services that we, uh, will help us to raise funds for our programs, including um, sustainable products, uh, special events, uh, fundraising opportunities that we raise our own funds through our enterprising arm. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next team presenting today is another Starter Impact team, Latina Grad Guide. Currently in the US, one in five women are Latina. One in four girls in public schools is Latina. And by 2060, one in 30 women and girls in the US will be Latina. The future of the United States is intricately linked to the future of these women and girls. And the future of these girls is intricately linked to their educational achievement and attainment. My name is Valerie Gomez. I'm a first year PhD student in the Education Studies Department here at UC San Diego, and I'm also the founder of Latina Grad Guide. Latina Grad Guide is an innovative social impact venture that seeks to close the academic achievement gap of Latinas in the US. Our goal is to equip Latinas with the knowledge and tools necessary to pursue graduate studies. In the 2015-2016 academic year, only 7% of master's degrees were awarded to Latinas or Latinos, and only half of those were awarded to Latinas specifically. Similarly, only 6% of doctor's degrees were awarded to Latinas or Latinos, and only half of those were awarded to Latinas. In the 2018-2019 academic year, only 4% of the students enrolled in academic doctorate programs here at UC San Diego were Latinas, echoing national trends. Why does this matter? We know that income across the lifetime steadily increases with increased educational attainment. This is where Latina Grad Guide comes in. Like I mentioned earlier, our primary goal is to provide Latina women with the knowledge and tools to successfully pursue graduate studies. We do so by providing a three-pronged approach to this solution. 
first, we provide workshops, second, networking events, and lastly, we intend to host annual conferences starting next year in 2021. Thus far, we've been able to host two virtual workshops in which we invited current graduate and professional students to speak about their academic experiences and journeys. Each of this, these virtual events had at least 30 participants. We've also hosted one virtual networking event this past month in which at least 27 individuals attended. We intend to generate revenue in various ways. The first is by conference and workshop fees, grants and donations, and advertisements and sponsorships. We recently launched a social media account, a platform to elevate our work and to establish a loyal and grassroots customer base. As you can see, thus far we've generated over 3,000 followers and thousands of individuals visit our page on a daily and weekly basis. This past week alone, an individual reached out to me um, to tell me how Latina Grad Guide has impacted her and her journey. I will read you what she said. I just wanted to stop in and say thank you so much. I am graduating from undergrad this spring and have recently been accepted to grad school. Up until this point, I've had to learn how to do everything by myself with little to no guidance. Even my current PWI or predominantly white institution has limited resources on how to help me reach this next milestone. All of these thoughts and the stress of finals had me considering do I even belong in a graduate program this fall? Which led me to search in Google, Latinas in grad school. And somewhere down the list of return searches, I found this resource. I know you don't know me, but I cannot thank you enough for the small reassurance and resources you have given me. Why should we invest in Latinas and their graduate education? To quote Alejandra Seja, the executive director of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for Hispanics, investing in our Hispanic girls and women is ever more critical to ensuring the country's economic vitality and global competitiveness. Thank you all so much for providing me this platform to share my venture with you. If you'd like to learn more about Latina Grad Guide or how you can support, feel free to send me an email take a look at our website or connect with us on Instagram at Latina Grad Guide. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Latina Grad Guide. Guide. Uh, you know, we have few questions. One of them is, do you think the cost of education is a barrier? Yes, um, and a lot of the women that we've connected with in these past few months have said that financing their education and just financing the graduate school application process in itself is a barrier and a challenge. We have partnered with the Princeton Review to provide free GRE prep books to at least 30 of our followers. So we are thinking about ways of mitigating the cost of applying to graduate school. Another question is, um are you thinking about providing prep courses on how to apply for grad school or other apply for, you know, do the test preparation? Okay. Yeah, so that's something, a topic that we're considering for future workshops and events. Um, and since we have partnered with the Princeton Review, which is one company that offers GRE prep courses, we are currently in conversations about how we can uh, host cost effective uh, workshops for these women. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our next group is another Start Our Rady team and we'll have Padfoot. Hi everyone, we are team Padfoot. We create innovative products for dogs and their owners. My name is Brad Friedman, my partner is Shane Gray. We're recent graduates of the Rady School of Management and we're in the Start Our Rady program. But most importantly, we're passionate dog owners. I have a three-year-old Boston Terrier named Molly and Shane has a three-year-old uh, Shishan named Charlie. And trust me, they are both amazing. So as passionate dog owners, we wanted to come up with a product that solves a lot of these main pain points, a lot of the main problems that 
uh, are associated with owning a dog. And those really all coalesce around taking your dog for a walk. So when you take your dog out, how do you deal with poop? Do you have a clean bag to pick it up when you need it? Once you pick it up, do you awkwardly walk around with it? Maybe try and find a neighbor's trash bin to throw it in. And then at nighttime, how are you able to see? Do you use your cell phone's flashlight or um, accidentally step in poop and ruin your favorite shoes? Brad, Brad, can you share your slides? Is it not, is it not shown? We just see your uh, Zoom. We just see a, a window. Hmm. Yeah, back up for a second. Can you see now? Yes, we can see. Apologies. All right. You didn't miss anything too important. <laughs> so that being said, uh, let me dive into a little product video that shows a little bit more about the problem and uh, solution. the flagship product you saw in the video we're calling the potty pack that's a little bit older of a prototype we've since refined it a little bit but it really solves all the main problems we were just talking about and that the video uh, displayed so in the back you have a compartment to always have clean bags when you need it in the center is a really unique compartment that holds used waste uh, so you don't have to walk around awkwardly with it and in the front is a flashlight that always points forward so you're safely walking your your dog the whole thing is washable too, and it att attaches to uh, any leash, totally agnostic that way. So really a, just a great utility bag for, for uh, dog walking. Additionally, we want to accompany this with our own padfoot uh, scented waste bags. So these smell nice, they're eco-friendly, biodegradable, so they're not gonna end up in the ocean. And we'd like to have a uh, kind of a razor razor blade model here. So you can subscribe to get them once every uh, one, two or three months. If you're a dog owner, especially in an apartment complex or a condo or just a more dense area, you know you go through a ton of these a month. So let's just deliver them to you straight to your door. Thanks, Brad. Uh, so as you can see here, we do have some competitors out there that share a couple of the same features as us. However, none of, the, none of these even come close to checking all the feature boxes that the potty pack does. Uh, the most important thing to note on this slide is uh, that the potty pack is the only product that stores the used waste bags once you're done picking up your dog's poop. Um, and our $30 price point was derived from customer surveys. Uh, so we are indeed selling a lot more for less. Uh, as for our market size and customer base, uh, the dog product market is enormous and just continuing to explode. Given the current climate, uh, the demand for dogs is actually so high right now that people who are trying to adopt are actually being put on wait lists. Uh, some, fun some fun facts about the market. Uh, one third of every American household owns at least one or more dogs. Uh, more than 50% of millennials own a dog. And income spent on pets is treated as a necessity rather than a luxury, uh, which is great for obvious reasons. Uh, as for our customers, we're initially targeting millennials to live in urban and suburban areas, chosen based on their needs and online shopping habits, as well as the above reasons. Uh, this brings us to our business model. Uh, we're gonna launch with a social media campaign in order to bring the consumers directly to our e-commerce site where they can buy our products directly from us. Uh, once our brand builds traction, we'll hopefully start to get our products on the shelves at local stores and eventually larger pet chains such as Petco and PetSmart. Um, a last note about our pricing, our financial research shows that the profit margins um, 
are around 60% for the potty pack and much higher for the disposable bags. Uh, moving forward and where we're at now, we actually just finalized our final prototype. Um, it's a little bigger than the one that you saw in the video and we're really happy with it. Uh, also finalized our digital renderings that we can then send on to our sourcing manufacturing. Uh, we actually found a facility in LA, which is really convenient, it's really close and proud to have it be made here. And we're in the process of developing an online presence. So um, well, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please contact us here. Great, thank you, Padfoot. So a couple questions. What's your barrier to entry for potential big competitors like Petco coming into the market? So we're going to focus a lot on brand. Uh, to be honest, we're not totally um, scared of a little competition. We think a little bit of competition might even help us because the market is so enormous. There are so many dog owners and potential customers out there that just some more, uh, more knowledge that products like this would even exist. We don't think would be a, a hindrance. We think that might actually help. And do you have different sizes for small dogs and big dogs? Yeah, so our first product, our first flagship is going to be aimed at really like not huge dogs, medium dogs. And if you need more than one, hopefully you buy more than one. But in the, as of round two, we'd like to uh, make more of a utility, a, a bigger one for, for bigger dogs and for uh, professional walkers. People that are using this like WAG and, and Rover, um, we think would be a great, uh, a great product. A little bit bigger, could handle multiple dogs. And any patents? Not yet. Uh, we're... We're, uh, now that we've finalized our, our um, renderings and, and prototypes, we're probably going to file a, uh, just a provisional. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next team is another starter impact team, Savvy. Hi, my name is Griffin Middleman, founder and CEO of Savvy. Thank you for joining me today. This is the Earth, and this is the Earth in 2100, when on average, degrees are five degrees hotter. At these temperatures, a fifth of the world won't have breathable air, over half the world will be dealing with malaria, and we'll have half as much food as we do now. Why are we facing these issues? Rampant consumerism which leads to only the large scale waste and degradation of our environment. People want to be part of the solution, but our commerce system makes it nearly impossible to do so. Imagine you could shop for the products you want at a price you want and help the environment. Here is where Savvy comes in. Savvy is the online marketplace for sustainable products and makes it easy to know the true cost of products, both financially and environmentally. Our goal is to ensure that you receive the information you deserve for free and the products you want at a discount empowering you to vote with your dollar. How do we do this? We provide customers with a comprehensive environmental assessment of each product on our Chrome extension and discount the products that are least impactful in the environment. We do this using lifecycle analysis, LCA, which is a government backed software that quantifies each step in the acquisition to end disposal from the beginning, the start, resource acquisition, and each step in between. Then those values are compiled, putting a concrete value on the product's environmental impact. This process is commonly used by businesses for their own products, but consumers never get to see these numbers. As the first to condense the raw data of this analysis into a simple one to 10 scale, we are leading the pack and helping our customers understand the impact of what they're buying. Here's how it works. So while on Savvy, you'll come across a product like this, an image along with its impact score, like you see with the green three. By then hovering over the impact score, you can easily find out more information on the sustainability of the product. And you can see the different environmental markers by which it's ranked. Looking even further, this allows you to compare different products easily and affordably, allowing you to see the sustainability of the product as well as details, details on the user's primary environmental values and uh, a place for our users to understand similar products that are just or as more sustainable. 
our target user generally fits this profile. While each year more people are concerned with the growing climate crisis, you want to find outlets to support the cause. Simultaneously, online shopping sales increase substantially each year. However, even with a growing market in several respects, few services cater to people who want to buy sustainable products and especially not online. And none get the level of assurance of sustainability that we do. Compared to others, we're the only far reaching marketplace that focuses on sustainable products. Not only that, we're the only marketplace that gives discounts using an environmental impact method, assuring that our customers can shop as sustainably as possible. Combining this with top tier user experience and expert partner relations, Savvy's at the top of its class. With $517 billion being put into consumer shopping online in 2018, online shopping is spent is growing almost four times faster than general retail sales. $128.5 billion were spent on sustainable products, which constitutes 20%, 22% of all product sales. According to Nielsen, sustainable product consumers are 67% more likely to be digitally engaged, meaning our target customer is large and our target market is even larger. We believe half a percentage of the sustainable product market share can be filtered through Savvy, which would secure $64.25 million in potential revenue per year. Our primary revenue comes from affiliate marketing, which we'll be doing for sustainable businesses, but this is only the start. Savvy works closely with partner businesses to attain the data necessary for accurate analyses, and in turn, will consult these companies on how to optimize their production and distribution processes to be most sustainable. In the long run, we plan to lurk with sustainable retailers and open the door for premium app purchases and greater deals for our customers. But I couldn't do this alone. Our team includes Nicholas Tabone as Chief Financial Officer, David Anyakora as uh, Director of Human Relations and Expansion, uh, Antonio Rodriguez as Technical Lead, Amrita Kohli as Data Director, and Mitchell Farrington as Sustainability Consultant. Not to mention, we partner with The Basement, Triton Consulting Group, and of course, Rady Impact start our impact. Though we come from diverse backgrounds and have a wide variety of skills, what ties us together is our passion for climate justice and our belief that Savvy is a service meant to last. Therefore, we aspire to grow Savvy from a good idea into a great business. Our next steps are to launch our website this May and our Chrome extension by the end of this summer. By the end of the year, we plan to have five companies contracted to letter of interests contracts and continue to implement our marketing and financial plans. I'll end with this. The average American requires 8.5 hectares of land for their yearly food and energy needs. This might not sound like a lot, but if everyone lived that way, we would need five Earths to cover the human population. We only have one planet. And while we in America might not face the everyday challenges of overconsumption yet, we will before long. At all scales, we must make necessary changes to our daily lives changes that will allow us to live within the means of our single planet. Savvy aims to make this process as easy as possible, minimizing those changes while maximizing the impact those changes have. If we don't change while we can, our planet will force us to. We'll be the ones harmed. So what change can you make? Each time you go and buy a product, ask yourself, what impact are you making? Can you do better? Ask yourself, how can you be a savvy shopper? Thank you. Thank you very much. We have few questions. One of them is, do you already have some partnerships lined up? Um, no definitive partnerships, but we've spoken with several companies, including Dr. Bronner's, um, in order to start working ourselves into the highly marketable, um, highly sustainable uh, product space. Um, we're looking at several different verticals uh, to start with. Uh, and will are really narrowing down our vertical to move forward uh, our marketing plan another question could you explain again how um where the revenue comes from sure so our partner businesses uh sustainable retailers uh we work with them uh, and we advertise for them so while people are shopping online uh when a savvy notification pops up for them we'll provide a link to our partner's website and we'll get a certain percentage of the sale once that customer shops from our partner business. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Our next team will be T. Brock, who is a Start Our Ready team. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, we are Team Tabra. Okay, to begin, uh, let us share a picture of Safar and please guess what he was doing. Uh, he might be uh, bowing, oh uh, no, uh, sorry. Uh, he might be checking a flat tire or he might be bowing to someone. If so, he's really polite because just, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, if so, he's really polite because his bow looks really uh, perfect with precise 90 degree angle. But he was uh, hiding his car key, actually. And here's the problem why he needs to hide a key. To hide a key. <clears throat> because uh, the surfer usually used to uh, use this small pocket and bring key into water. However, with the modern key, with it, uh, however, the modern car has electric key, which is not waterproof. So that's why a lot of surfer bring the key, uh, a lot of surfer hide their key in the car or somewhere in the beach. So is it safe? Of course not. In fact, we saw the article, uh, thieves targeting surfers in La Hoya. So we looked for a solution and found that some surfer use this lock box, which is well known in real estate industry. So we think this could be a solution and bought and tried and lock the door and put the key in the box. But we can still open the door. Why? Because this car has smart key, which automatically open the door just standing nearby the car. So even though we put the key in the box, the signal still goes through the box and you can open the door. So this could couldn't be our solution. And we looked at the lockbox in the market, but none of them have RFID block, none of them have RFID blocking feature. So we are stuck. So Daniel, uh, you are smarter than smart key. You have a solution, right? Yoshi, of course. Your solution is Tebra. <laughs> Tebra is the first key lock box designed for car smart keys and made for outdoor sport fans like you. In Japanese, te means hand and bra means free. So there you are. Tebra will let you go out hands free and enjoy your passion. To prevent others from looking into your car like this, Tebra comes with an RFID blocking layer that will allow you to place your smart key in it and walk away, confident that that will not happen. The master lock box has a small space for one or two house keys at most. Uh, Tebra comes with a large compartment that will easily fit your entire key bundle, bundle cards, and other small objects while remaining compact. Other options were not made to lie flat on a car door handle, causing scratches. Tebra was designed specifically to prevent this. And last, the solid hooks, them in placement locations, Tebra's flexible and extensible cable allows you to place it almost anywhere. On the car door handle or under the car, on the wheel or the mirror. The mirror is great because when you fold it, Tebra becomes difficult to notice. This is a picture of Joshi's car with Tebra on it. And even if I offer you a close up, it is still really difficult to see. This is an extra layer of protection for Tebra. So let me show you how easy it is to use Terra. Okay. 
San Diego surfers and most would agree on a $35, $45 price range. When we had the mock-up ready, however, we went out again and surfers would get very excited about it and call it a $50 product right away. At this price, the margin on a Tebra unit is up to 70%. This is like $5 to $15 higher than we had. Uh, we think that this is higher than initially, mostly because people were no longer comparing it to the master log box. They were understanding the real value of Terra. There are uh, 35 million surfers in the world. And uh, as a sample, the US surfing market is over two and a half million surfers. And of those, about 2.3 million are 16 years of age or older and potentially own or can drive a car. We are convinced, however, that as soon as other outdoor sport fans see the potential, they will be very interested in it as well. So now that people saw, now that we saw how people get excited about Tebra, how can we put it on the hands of our fans? Our plan is to start a Kickstarter campaign towards the end of 2020 for a total of $22,000. This money will help us fund our initial round of production at Fusion. Uh, contract manufacturer in Tecate, Mexico, who we are already talking to. To create awareness, we're going to use targeted ads and endorsements through mass social media, and we're going to send samples for articles and reviews on specialized blogs. For sales, sales will be mostly online using Amazon and our own site, Terra.com. So, Terra project, this project has been possible thanks to collaborations first with a group of great engineers from the Jacob School of Engineering who, as we speak, are taking our, our current project to the next level. And with Derek Wayne, our starter mentor and current CEO of ScoreStream. Derek is an experienced executive and he will guide us towards the very successful venture. We are looking for connections in the surfing and outdoor sports community to expand our reach. So feel free to reach out, to ask questions, and let us know if you're ready to help us turn Tebra, the hands-free solution, into a reality. Thank you. Great, thank you, Tebra. And we have a few questions over chat. Um, is there a broader um, approach or technology application you're planning to explore or just be a single specialty device? Well, the RFID blocking technology, which is the key feature of Tebra, is uh, widely used on things like uh, wallets for, for credit card protection and uh, other, other tip, uh, predictions like in the pharma industry. We, are, we think we're, we're gonna focus on, the, on this log uh, uh, niche because there's nothing out there that can, they can give this usability with, with the, the full feature of, of uh, difficulty of the log. And can you get a patent? And what is the material of the core actually made of? So the key, uh, we are planning to get the patent just as the final prototype is completed next month. Um, the core, uh, uh, so the key element that needs to, to, that is needed to block the RFID signal is a metal, is a electricity conducting metal. So we plan to have the outer uh, shell made of metal and then uh, part of the inner shell made of metal as well, but the rest is gonna be filled with, uh, with plastic. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have our last team presenting. It is a start our inclusion team, Vibrant. Hi everyone, I'm Diana Valdez, the CEO and co-founder of Vibrant. Hi, I'm Richard Miller, the CTO of Vibrant. And I'm Tiffany Wang, the Chief Product Officer of Vibrant. Less than 1% of clothing material actually gets recycled back into new material. 
And if you look at a bit, the bigger picture in fashion's linear take make waste model, 73% of the material ends up incinerated or tossed into the landfills, which is especially wasteful considering that we have close to 100% of virgin feedstock, so auto synthetic and natural fibers are getting discarded at the very end. Overproduction is not only an economic like environmental problem, but it's also an economic issue for fashion retailers who lose $50 billion every year because due to their inventories. It's hard for fashion brands to predict what is going to be their best sellers if it takes five weeks to nine months to produce the clothes because of their global supply chain. So they end up losing money and overstocking their inventory when those closes, not all of them sell out. Our patent pending color changing fabric allows us to cut down on the environmental impact of the fashion industry. Our prototypes made using our custom extruder and dye dispenser and RPET, a recycled material from plastic water bottles, are all compatible with existing fashion industry standards such as 3D knitting, making the adoption of our technology simple and quick for companies that choose to implement it. If we take a look at how clothing is traditionally produced, this is some of the many steps needed in various different places. So raw fiber from like Cambodia, like so sewing done in China or something. Anyways, it takes five weeks to nine months. And if you take a look at Vibrant's color changing technology, this is how we can shorten the lead time. We can get rid of raw fiber, so no need for like land, fertilizers, water, by using RPET material. We'll be spinning it into yarn, and then we can cut out the sewing and cutting so there's like excess cutoff that happen in that process as well by using existing 3D knitting machines. So we can go directly from fiber to the finished garment. Real-time on-demand production allows producers to decrease their lead time by removing the variable of consumer color preference. With the ability to change the color of a garment after its production or at any time after its purchase, we're able to reuse clothes in a new way. And at the end of a garment's life cycle, we can easily reintroduce the product as raw materials in our production process by simplifying the process and removing the need to sort by color. Since we're using RPET as our main material, we looked at the global market and found out that 63% of that is used for industrial yarn. When we zoomed into the US, um, we saw a 14 billion opportunity with a 7.67 percent growth rate. The main, the majority of use of these yarns are seen in clothing, shoes, and other fashion items as well. For go-to-market strategy, we looked at partnering with brands that are innovative, sustainable, with an existing complementary technology, and those who could afford our pricing structure. So we identified Rothy's, a shoe brand that uses 3D technology and recycled plastic, plastic bottles to make shoes. Moreover, their shoes only change in color and pattern. I just buy. And are priced at around $125 per pair, which is a perfect fit considering that it only takes about $20 to make a pair of shoes with our technology. Other competitors in the market include Cormorphous, so they're another fashion startup who is selling color changing clothes to end users. They use their patent microwire technology, so their color changing aspect requires a battery pack, hence it's not very sustainable. And But they do offer that end user customization. If we look at other textile manufacturers such as Lensing, which is most well known for a tensile, it's the current most sustainable um, kind of fat fibers out there. They do have that sustainability, but they don't have the additional end user customization. So Vibrant is actually able to have both of these features as well as help with inventory management and especially increase on-demand production. So far, we've done a lot of great things in about a year that we've been working on this project. We started with the National Science Foundation Innovation Corp, really dove into customer discovery, and then we went into incubators and accelerators at uh, UC San Diego. Just last December, we competed at an industry uh, global competition and we came up as top 20 out of 5,893 applicants. Um, we then moved into January and we expanded our team 
to from one to eleven, we brought in more nano and chemical engineers to work on the prototyping um, of the fabric, and thus we were able to make that first fabric swatch that you guys saw in the beginning, and we filed for a provisional patent in February. Today, we just got awarded last Friday with five thousand dollars from UC Big Ideas. Um, we have been able to create our dye dispenser and fiber extruder prototypes and our and our way to incorporation. So what's next? Um, our, the phase that we're on is the phase one. We really wanna be able to create that first shoe prototype that will be able to change color and be knitted. Once we have that, we will be able to start our testing in terms of uh, flexibility, material, and user adaptation and other uses as well. After that, we will be moving into implementing a pilot program with Rothy's, who are, we're currently in talks with. We have decided to, and agreed to sign a mutual NDA to start discussing implementation of, our, of the pilot program. And so we're hoping to be able to start implementing this sometime um, mid-year of 2021. Our team is composed of who you've already met, um, and also an R&D team with nano and chemical engineers and amazing group of advisors that are super dedicated to our growth and have been with us since the beginning. They range in different backgrounds from business, strategy, technology commercialization, patent writing, um, tech sustainability in the fashion industry, textiles, and so on. And with that, join us in making, transforming linear fashion into circular fashion by re defining the three R's, reduce textile and dye waste, reuse clothing by changing its color, and recycle clothing without starting color. Thank you all for listening and we look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much. We have several questions and some of them are, what do you think is the biggest barrier to adoption? And did you talk to potential customers? What are the customers saying? So one of our big uh, restrictions at the moment is that we're mainly targeting 3D knitting manufacturers to begin with. Um, this is one of the reasons that Rothy's is a good first partner because a lot of their technology is complementary to ours. And we're in early talks with them to uh, uh, first with our, their sustainability officer to ensure that our company goals are in line. And then we're also scheduling our next meeting with their design team to ensure that all of our designs are compatible with their current production process. Yeah, so in addition to the consumer barrier of making sure that they have the manufacturing capability for our end users, at the retail stores where the dye dispensers, the color changing stations will be put, we might need to do some training for the employees or have it be a really user-friendly kiosk for them to do the dye dispenser. Right now, we imagine it to be like a beverage dispenser where you like pick the color, potentially mix the color, and you watch it get injected into the transparent clothes. And so far, well, we have been validated for being able to tackle this problem for our production for these brands. We do understand that there's still that uh, validation to be taken for the end user of people who would actually want to come back to the store and change the color of their shoes or clothing. Uh, however, we're not necessarily focusing on that at the moment. We are focusing on the main um, value proposition, which is on-demand production. Um, and we will be then be focusing on, once we're able to validate that we're able to, to create this type of feature, we will be then conducting a lot more customer interviews for the end user. We have a last question is, how much will this cost? As mentioned before, um, it is, it really, to make a pair of shoes, it costs $20 <laughs> with our technology. Um, Tiffany and Richard can um, go a little bit more into depth onto what that entails. Yeah, so our fixed cost for each of our extruders uh, consisting of each of the components is around $250 per machine. And then our dye dispensers uh, for our prototyping are right around 150. Um, so we're looking at fixed costs of around there and the material costs between the fiber, uh, fiber material, our PET, and the dyes at about $15 per pair of shoes for uh, fiber material and about $5 for the dye material. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now it's time, audience, for you to vote for your favorite team. So please look at the poll and Zoom. This is our audience, audience choice award. 
while we're waiting for the poll to complete, I wanted to first of all thank all the Start Our teams um, for presenting today. I know it's a challenge not being live and doing this virtual. I'd also like to thank all of our mentors. We have 70 mentors who work with our Start Our programs and we could not do this without you. And then finally, thanking our sponsors as well. We are also going to have the next uh, application for the next Start R that will be in fall 2020. We will open all cohorts, Start R AD, Start R Veteran, Impact and Inclusion. This coming year, we are also going to accept teams that uh, are dealing with COVID. The teams that are um, providing solutions, not only for, for example, novel diagnostics or novel tracking or treatment or remote work, work or virtual learning, but also we, uh, we encourage teams with ideas, products and services to apply that, are, that can help San Diego businesses and San Diego economy recover and grow. Application for the next start are will be open before the beginning of fall, fall quarter. So we still have boats coming in. We now have over a hundred boats. Just a few more minutes and we will announce the winner. One of the things we're also going to do is share the contacts for all of the teams. So if you would like to set up a meeting via Zoom to meet with the different teams, you'll have that contact information as well. It will give it a few more seconds and we'll close the voting. We have 116 votes in. Okay, it looks like we have a winner. I'm going to publish the results. So Savvy Team, you are our Start Our Demo Day audience winner, and you'll, you've won a check for $500. So congratulations, team. Congratulations. So thank you all for attending our first ever virtual start our demo day. We hope to welcome you back to campus and hopefully see you next year for demo day. Please stay, um, stay healthy um, and stay safe. Thank you very much everybody for participating. You can connect with all of the teams virtually and on this slide we have the email addresses so please feel free and email them. Great. Good night. Good night, everybody. We will see you again at the next Start Our Demo Day. Great job, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.